Today we are speaking to Stuart Dougal, who has kindly agreed to answer a few questions for us. Welcome to East End Park, Stuart. Thank you. Uh, we are really interested in why a sensible guy who has an exciting and a challenging career ahead of him decides to become a referee. Can you please give us a bit of an insight into how long you were in the game and what your highlights of your career in football were? Oh, well, that's, that's a very, very big question. First of all, I got involved um, basically because I broke my back. Um, in a simple accident, slipped on some ice. Um, I played football morning, noon and night and realised that I couldn't really go back to football. One of my dad's friends, a guy called Joe Kelly, who refereed uh, at the top level in the 60s, um, he said, take up refereeing. Having played football, I didn't really like referees and I can now understand why people don't necessarily like me um, from a refereeing point of view. Um, so I, I took refereeing up in 1985, got onto the top list at 1989, to start running the line at the senior games. 91 started refereeing at the top level. I became FIFA, which is international referee in 1996 after two years as an assistant international referee. And I retired from international duty 2007 and from the SFA 2009. Wow, that's a long time. It's it was a long time, yes, yeah, 16 years. In a role that, as you say, a lot of people kind of don't like Seeing people in, in the black. Well, yes. It's not in the black anymore. <laughs> um, in, in your career in football, who did you feel was the most difficult player to manage on the field? I think it's difficult just to put the the bad boy who's the most difficult. Sometimes it was the, the really skillful player who, as we all know in the modern game, uh, some can go to ground a lot more easily than others. So it's, it's difficult to try and manage or understand the players who are genuinely fouled or those who are play acting a little. But in terms of the the, the bad boy, um, I think Darren Jackson, if he would ever listen or see this, would be surprised for me to, to to name him. Darren was a real handful by his own admission. Lovely man off the park, got on really well with him. But when he crossed that white line, he just, um, he was a different guy right. by his so own admission. Personality change? Ah, mouthy and crabbit, uh, that good old Scottish word there. And uh, I think that kind of summed him up. Wow. That's unexpected. Um, we're interested just now in knowing what your relationship with Dunfermline has been over the, the years. And did you enjoy refereeing Powers games, for example? Which Powers managers, players, can you remember? Um, and any memorable matches? Well, certainly in terms of the, the, the club as a whole, um, I was certainly made aware of Dunfermline's history um, through two work colleagues who are heavily involved at Dunfermline just now, one being Ian Hunter, another one being Donald Adamson. And um, any time you came to Dunfermline, you were well looked after. Unfortunately, I can't remember the, the old chap that used to look after us in terms of the dressing room, but there was always a friendly smile, friendly welcome. And one of the, the key things I loved about coming here was I loved the playing surface. Probably one of the best playing surfaces in Scotland during my time. Um, and I, I was sorry when they, they reconfigured uh, the ground because I liked the old East End Park. I yes. thought it was a great atmosphere. The crowd were generally pretty sporting as uh, the, the crowd goes. So I really enjoy uh, Dunfermline. In terms of managers, the obvious ones, uh, Jim Leishman, great character. I, I started um, refereeing uh, the games at Meadowbank when Jim was there, so I've kind of come through the ranks with Jim. Jimmy Calderwood became a very good pal, um, Jimmy Nick, um, who was his sidekick there. So, yeah, I, I've got a lot of fond memories of, of people and of the club. Good, and we've got some fond memories of you um, in fond. the games. <laughs> <laughs> but for a very specific question about the 2004 Scottish Cup final, um, and that's where most Paris fans will remember you from. What, what are your actual memories of that day? What was the game like to referee? And could you please just remember to tell us a little bit about the handball incident? OK. Um, I don't know what handball incident you may be talking to, but I'll, I'll cast my mind back a little further. Um, the first thing that um, a lot, probably a lot of Dunfermline fans will forget um, or want to forget is the there was a real contentious uh, shout about the Paris goal when you went 1-0 up. I was very comfortable that, uh, yeah, the goalkeeper may have been impeded, but he was impeded by Didier Gatt pushing, I think, maybe one of the young brothers um, into him. Um, but my reckoning anyway was that Borac was actually missing the ball 
as it was going over his head. So I, I, I was very comfortable in, in awarding the goal to Dunfermline. At half time, I had a hell of a ding dong with John Robertson in the tunnel, who was absolutely certain that it was a foul uh, on their goalkeeper. I think the television cameras will show that um, I got that one right. Moving on to the handball, this is where I've got to fess up, and I'm very happy to fess up. Didn't even see whether it was a handball or a, a, in the the move that led to it. I you didn't see the incident? I didn't see I, I believed that the, the ball had been cleared, headed clear. And in my defence, because obviously you want me to defend myself here, is that um, it took Sky about six or seven minutes before they went back to the incident. Um, there weren't many claims from the Dunfermline players, not, not that referees go with the claim, but again, I'm just trying to use that as to give the balance, not to make any excuses here. I got it wrong in terms of I didn't identify whether it was a handball or not. But the big thing here, and this is where the law comes in, you've got to determine if I had seen it, was it an intentional handball? Or did the player go to header the ball and his arm get in the way? Now, in 2014, there is this explanation of was the hand in an unnatural position? And if the hand's in an unnatural position, which you could argue more than an intentional handball at the time, it should have been a penalty. But in 2004, even if I'd seen it, I have to be honest and say I'm not sure whether I could have ruled it was absolutely intentional or whether it was an accidental handball. Well, that's very honest. <laughs> we try our best. <laughs> uh, lastly, your life after refereeing. Um, are you enjoying the time away from the football? Or do you yearn to be back? Or are, are you, in fact, involved in anything at the moment? I'm not officially involved uh, and haven't been since I, I finished. Um, I basically went into the media afterwards to try and give the referees a voice. And not just the referees, but to try and help the fans understand a little bit more about not just the refereeing decisions or that we feel were victimised, etc. But it was just to try and get that balance because certainly through my business life, a, a number of fans are always interested to hear the referee side of things. And once you know something um, accurately or, or knowledgeably, it puts a different slant in things. So I, I did that for a while, but um, unfortunately the, the demise of Scottish football, particularly at the top level, has meant that there's no real interest in terms of the, the media now for, for referee or, or a referee spokesman. So I'm quietly drifting into the background. Right. Do you still go and watch matches? Or? I, I went with my daughter just as soon as I retired. Uh, she got into football, so we would go around the grounds. Um, she's big into her Scotland, uh, watching Scotland. Um, but now she's over in America, so I, I watch it television. I watch the referees. I hope that they continue to, to at least perform as well as they can. Um, but I'm afraid to say that I think the lack of entertainment in the Scottish game in particular has meant that I look at Barcelona a lot more than I ever did. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. Appreciate it and all the best for the future. If Likewise. If you want to take in a game at Dunfermline again, just let us know. Super. And you'll be more than welcome. Thanks very much, thank Margaret. You. Cheers.